This is episode 176 of the Smart Poker Study Podcast. I'm answering your questions about the order of study, live low buy-in tournaments, and keeping track of those live poker hands. Did you catch last week's episode about what I learned from playing 263 Heads Up Sit and Go matches? If not, go back and download episode 175 to hear what I learned from them. It's poker study time, y'all. I appreciate you spending some time with me today, and thank you so very much for that. I also love that y'all share the show on the socials out there, and I love hearing someone say to me, hey, my friend told me about the show, so now I'm subscribed and I listen every week. That feels super good when I hear stuff like that, and I really appreciate y'all telling your poker pals about it. And wow, you know, it's finally here. Black Panther is coming out this Friday. And once again, I haven't seen a single movie trailer for it. So I'm going to be surprised by everything in the movie. I don't even know who the bad guy, you know, who the villain is going to be. Or which superheroes are going to join up. Like in the latest Spider-Man, you know, Iron Man popped up. I had no idea um, uh, until I actually saw the movie. And then he showed up. It was great when you don't know what's going to happen, you know. Add some surprise in your life, people. Don't ever watch movie trailers. But, uh, you know, what I often do, though, instead of watching the movie trailers, I look at the score on Rotten Tomatoes. And for this one, it's getting a 97%, which is 102 out of 105 top critics. And, you know, the thing about this is, if you're one of those three, three out of 105 people that didn't like this movie, uh, you know, you're entitled to your opinion. But the fact that you are three out of 105 people that didn't like it mean that I (laughs) that means I never need to listen to your opinion again you know honestly if you are so far removed from everybody else's enjoyment of it I mean at least when it comes to superhero and Marvel movies and big budget action stuff fun movies you know the three of you I'm not going to learn your names by going back and looking but really you don't deserve to be listened to for any opinion on future uh action movies and especially superhero stuff you're entitled to your opinion keep sharing it but I ain't listening um you know just because you have an opinion doesn't make you right but uh speaking of being right I really have to say that my two newest Patreon supporters Audrey Van Can and Frank Brockman you are right in your support of the podcast on Patreon I really do appreciate the two of you. I love creating this show on a weekly basis uh, and the additional uh, episodes that I've been putting out. I spend a lot of time in making it and my time is supported by everyone on Patreon. Your support shows me that you enjoy the show and that you want me to just keep podcasting all of the strategy and poker study talk. To start your support of the show, go to patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy. There are different levels of support with different rewards attached. And for the rewards, February rewards are coming out this week. The podcast is about three bets, and the video is about finding your missed river value betting opportunities. So once you begin your Patreon support this month, you will be getting those two bonuses this week, and then you'll also have access to the patron-only archives of the various pieces of content. So for just a few dollars a month, you are supporting the show, and I really do appreciate it. So once again, patreon.com slash smartpokerstudy to start that support. Okay, I think it's time for Q&A. We have four of them today from Rick, Greg, John, and Frank. Please visit the show notes page for everything I discussed today at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 176. Let's roll, gambate! This is damn exciting stuff. So the first question today comes to us from Rick, and it's about the order of the items that you study. This is what he said in an email. I've mapped out a blueprint where I start with player types, then preflop ranges, followed by more of the math and theory aspects. My question for you is, does it really matter the order in which we study to make other concepts easier? Thanks for your time, Rick. Well, cool beans. Thank you very much for that email uh, and the question, Rick. I really like your idea of studying player types first, then pre-flop ranges. And that's exactly how I'm starting off my next book. Uh, Of course, you can study in any order that you want. But just like learning to crawl, then learning to walk, and then of course running, there's a natural order to your studies. And this order just makes progress a bit quicker. If we look at a macro level poker example, you're better off working on pre-flop before you work on post-flop skills because everything that you do pre-flop affects your post-flop game. At the micro level, we can zoom in a little bit. You're better off studying 2-bet ranges before you study 3-bet ranges because 3-bet ranges should be developed around what you believe people make their 2-bets with. And your 3-bet defense ranges can only be made with your 2-bet ranges in mind and after studying what your opponents are likely 3-betting you with. 
So beyond studying strategies in order, you'd benefit from uh, plugging leaks in order as well. At a macro level, you want to fix pre-flop leaks before going post-flop. You want to fix flop leaks before turn, turn leaks before river, etc. At a micro poker level right here, uh, if you had three different leaks, let's say one of them occurred over 15 hands, and it was negative 80 big blinds per 100 hands. The win rate over those 15 hands was negative 80. Maybe the, uh, a second leak was 45 hands and negative 4 big blinds per 100 hands. And a third leak is 220 hands. And over those 220 hands, you had a negative 10 big blinds per 100 hands. Well, you might think to yourself, geez, the negative 80 should be studied and then the negative 10 and then the negative four big blind win rates, you know, to hit those biggest losers right up front. But really, I think that we should look at it the opposite way here. You'd want to hit the one that occurred most frequently, 220 hands, you lost 10 big blinds per 100 hands played. This spot happens so frequently and you're making so many mistakes, you've got to address this first. Fixing these 220 leaking hands would be a big increase to your win rate. And then plus, when you fix something that happens more often, that's just more impactful in your game. So you fix that 220 leak, negative 10 big blind win rate. Then you fix the leak that has 45 hands. And then you address the leak uh, over just 15 hands. Alrighty, thank you very much again for that question, Rick. On to question two from Greg today. And this one's about beating low buy-in tournaments. This is from Greg's email to me. What is the best way to try and run well in these low skill tournaments and not get so frustrated that I quit trying to beat them? Thank you so much for that question, Greg. So these tournaments are incredibly profitable, but they are full of variance as well because of all the bad players in them. The opponents you're up against, they make a ton of mistakes. They call way too often pre-flop, call too often on the flop as well. Because they call so often, they hit tons of draws and your value hands can be brought down super quickly. But here's one of the things, the first point about being frustrated. Your opponents are making so many mistakes. Every time you make a big bet and they call, or they shove on you with a weak hand and you call with a better hand, you're theoretically making money. See, these bad players are what makes poker profitable. Without them, it would just be a ton of good players battling back and forth, breaking even, and the only people making money are the casinos with the rake. So keep this in mind when you're getting frustrated. Know that you are making better decisions than your opponents, and your good decisions will, in the end, win you all the money. And because you're up against all these weak players, you must be value-oriented and charge those players big time when they're capable of calling with under gut shots and you know 10 high backdoor flush draws and that kind of stuff and here's an important thing i learned from alex fitzgerald poker tournaments are not about making the most money every hand they're about making money from as many hands as possible which means that due to the blind increases you need to constantly be making money in order to stay afloat and to have a chance of surviving and ultimately taking it down earning tons of blinds and antis in the later rounds is critical so make sure you aren't also missing opportunities to get value from your hands too many players bet big on the river in hopes of getting paid off with their strongest hands. This makes it easy for opponents to fold their marginal hands. What you need to do when you think your opponent can call, maybe they have second pair or third pair but they just don't believe you, you want to bet smaller for value on rivers. Even at a one quarter pot bet, if that ends up being actually eight big blinds, that is killer. That's like stealing three pots pre-flop. And also with these tournaments, strive to play as many late position hands as well. Your weaker opponents don't care about the position, but if you play a majority of your live tournament hands in position from the cutoff and the button, maybe calling from the big blind versus a small blind open, uh, if you do that, if you play more in position pots than all of your opponents, you will have a huge advantage over them. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial at audibletrial.com slash smartpokerstudy. They have over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. And of course, they have both of my books, How to Study Poker, Volumes 1 and 2. But if you want some awesome content outside of poker, they have the entire Lord of the Rings series, as well as The Hobbit. Uh, they're just really good audiobooks, full like, like full cast narrations with sounds and everything. Beautiful audiobooks, fun to listen to. You get more out of those than you do out of the movies, although I freaking love the movies, let me tell you. The audiobooks are killer if you're looking for some good fantasy fiction.
And a couple of shout outs today. Tyler Cress purchased Poker Tracker 4 through my affiliate link. You can do the same at smartpokerstudy.com slash poker tracker 4. After he made the purchase, Tyler sent me the email or he emailed me the confirmation email that he receives from them. And in return, I replied right back and I attached my smart HUD for him to use as a thanks for purchasing Poker Tracker 4 through my affiliate link. So if you want the same deal that Tyler did, if you want to take advantage of your opponents, if you want to exploit them, heck, if you don't even want to use the HUD, but you want to save the hands in the database for all the study that you want to do get poker tracker 4 and johnny scarlet is on a learning rampage he picked up my expert hand reading webinar and from that he is working on his hand reading skills street by street well pre-flop and then street by street doing all the practice learning all the steps that i take to do expert level hand reading so thank you very much for that johnny and if you'd like to purchase that webinar or any of the others just check out the links in today's show notes page Alrighty, on to question three, poker people. So question three comes to us from John, and it's about tracking live poker hands. He says, I know you have a ton of online experience, but I have a question about live play. I've downloaded Poker Income and Poker Bankroll Tracker. They are iOS apps. But I was wondering if you knew of something that would be optimal in recording my hand, my bets, and others that I may see in Showdown. All right, thank you so much for that email, John. I appreciate it. So it's tough for you live players to record your hands, but there's really only one way to do it, and that's to write them down and be diligent about it. I record my hands in two ways here. So number one is handwritten in my little live notebook. I have a live notebook that I keep with me. It just it just sits on my lap um, or in my cargo pants pocket, and I pull it out as I as I want to take notes as I'm playing. This is the quickest and easiest way for me. Uh, I know other people, they use Evernote or like other electronic notepads, but I like the physical, like holding it and writing with a pen. Uh, I try to record the positions involved, the player types, stack sizes, and street by street actions along with the boards. After practicing this for a bit, I got really good at it during last year's Colossus at the WSOP. I recorded, I don't know, 20 hands out of my 10 hours of play, eight hours of play, whatever I played. Um, And it was really good practice just for one tournament, trying to write down as many important hands as I could. And the second thing I do is I use the Share My Pair app. Uh, This is how you could just basically put in the hand details, you know, the stack sizes, the players involved, the action street by street, uh, the bet sizes, all the stuff that I just mentioned that you want to record. You enter those in within the Share My Pair app. And it's super easy to use. And just with a little practice, you'll be whipping out those uh, those hand histories real quick. And, and it's great to do this because you could share it with friends. But for another thing, you can actually see the action unfold. Sometimes the written hand history, uh, it kind of takes a while to go through it. And when I see a written hand history, my mind doesn't really, uh, I guess, visualize the written hand history so well. So like, in the Facebook discussion group when somebody puts a hand history there, what I often have to do is I whip out a piece of paper, I actually draw a table on it, I write out the positions, the stack sizes, and I kind of create my own um, on a piece of paper kind of view of the hand history, you know? So that's what I like about Share My Pair. It just lays out the hand for you street by street, all the actions. And the, the Share My Pair app, it forces you to put all the information in correctly or things just won't add up. So you're forced to take good notes Uh, so that you can later build the hands correctly within the app. Alrighty, so thank you for that question, John. And today's final question comes to us from Frank, and it is the meaning of life. Here's his question right here. What is the meaning of life, or why are we here? Well, thanks for that email, Frank. I've never actually answered this. I don't think I've ever um, given my opinion on this. But here it is, nice and simple. Simple question, what's the meaning of life? Simple answer, we are here to do what we love to do. So for me, here's what I love to do in order. Raise my children. So teach them to become good people, good citizens. The second thing is travel and share everything with my wife. I just love it. We spent a full month with the kids in New Zealand earlier this year, or well, one year ago, earlier 2017. And uh, it was just so much fun. I love doing that stuff. We take big family trips every two, every two years. The next thing I love to do is play poker and teach poker. So as you know, pretty obvious, that's what I'm doing right now. The next thing is to play paintball. So I go paintballing at least once every two weeks. Sometimes I've gone three or four weeks in a row. I just freaking love it. So I do it as much as I can. Um, The next things I love are podcasts, books, movies, and music. So constantly when I'm not doing some focused thing where I need all my concentration. I'm listening to podcasts all day long, especially as I'm doing chores, walking the dogs and stuff. I listen to the books on audio tape, of course, or 
audiobooks, I should call them. I read books plenty as well. I watch movies almost every single night. My wife and I are on the couch for one hour watching the first half or the second half of a movie before we put the kids to bed. And then music all day long. I've got music playing as I'm doing my work as well. So you've got to figure out what you love to do and do more of it. What that also means is you've got to do less of the stuff you hate doing. That's why I don't work an office job anymore. It's just not for me. I found, um, I had a lot of fulfillment in my office job working for the restaurant like I did for like seven years at the office or maybe six years. And it was a it, it was a very interesting job, but it just wasn't for me. I was working eight to 10 hours every day helping somebody else build their dreams, right? I mean, it felt good. I was needed. I was doing really good work, but really I wasn't building anything for myself. Now with this whole smart poker study thing, I am building something for myself. I'm writing books. I'm putting out podcasts. Hopefully, not hopefully, soon I will create a course. Um, and then coaching, of course, obviously is a ton of fun and I really enjoy it. So I'm doing all the things that I really love to do and I'm trying my best to avoid the crap I hate doing. All right, thanks for that final question, Frank. I appreciate it. This episode is not complete until you head to the show notes page at www.smartpokerstudy.com slash pod176. You can go there for screenshots and links to everything I discussed today. And of course, you can find ways to support the podcast and keep me rolling. Thank you so much for listening today. Make sure you enable my Alexa flash briefing skill. Just search for Smart Poker Study in the Amazon Alexa store. If you could type the word Smart Poker Study, please find me on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I promise I'll be doing more Twitching very soon. And of course, today was a Q&A. If you have questions for the next Q&A, send them in. Sky at SmartPokerStudy.com Alrighty, poker people. Next week in episode 177, I'm going to kick off a brand new series of podcasts all about plugging leaks. And next week will be the intro episode, so I'll talk a little bit about the series, but I also have an interview with a leak plugging expert. His name is Andreas Froley, and he gives us some important leaks to plug. So please stay tuned for that. Word of mouth is the best advertising, so thank you very much for sharing the show with other poker people. Your sharing and caring is what helps us grow. Until next time, study smart, play much, and make your next session the best one yet.